My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, to all our seekers of knowledge, seekers after the truth, also to our YouTube and Facebook viewers, I greet you all once again with the universal greetings of peace and love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, guidance, mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. Welcome to Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, bringing the light of Islam to each and every one of you. I hope and pray that you're joining me this wonderful Monday evening, alhamdulillah, in the best of health and faith by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a very exciting and very packed program for each and every one of you. And so we ask and beg and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to, to shower his blessings upon each and every one of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your time for joining us this evening. Alhamdulillah, as we commence our program with our opening Quranic recitation. Remember, whenever the Quran is recited, let us listen to it attentively. Let us be silent so that we may receive some mercy and some blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us go straight to our opening Quranic recitation. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdin Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhin An'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وما خلقنا السماء والأرض وما بينهما لاعبين لو أردنا أن نتخذ له ولاتخذناه من لدنا إن كنا فاعلين بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل فيدمغه فإذا هو زاهق ولكم الويل مما تصفون وله من في السماوات والأرض ومن عنده لا يستكبرون عن عبادته ومن عنده لا يستكبرون عن عبادته ولا يستحسرون يسبحون الليل وال نهار لا يفترون أم اتخذوا آلهة من الأرض هم ينشرون لو كان فيهما آلهة إلا الله لفسدتا فسبحان الله رب العرش عما يصفون لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون أم اتخذوا من دونه آلهة Sadaqallahu al-Azim, surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty has spoken the truth. That was our opening Quranic recitation to commence our program. And what other way to start our program, believing brothers and sisters, paving the way beautifully for the remaining items of our program, turning our attention to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the Quran. Whatever blessings would have earned from that recitation, we ask and beg and pray that it will be showered upon each and every one of you. All our brothers and sisters who may be going through difficulties, who may be going through hardship and challenges in life, 
We ask and beg and pray that the blessings are and dear will be showered upon each and every one of you by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the first first portion of our program this evening is coming your way with the kind compliments and the courtesy of Gafsin's industry. Check out their mega complex that is located at Rome Magdum that is on the east bank of Demara. And you can make contact with them on telephone number 226-3666 or 225-6412. You can also visit all of their other branch offices that they have in Burbies on the east coast, on the east bank, west coast, also on the west bank of Demara. Gafsin's Industry, their mega complex located at Rome Magdum on the east bank of Demara. Aqua Viva Purified Water to quench that thirst, believing brothers and sisters. Then visit them at Lot 5 La Jalousy on the west coast of Damara, or you can make contact with them on telephone number 6280173. Aqua Viva Purified Water VNP Supermarket. Check them out at 20 North Leonora. That is um, on the public road, that is on the west coast of Damara. Or you can contact them on telephone number 2683976. Wolf Furniture Store. They are located at Public Road Leonora on the west coast of Damara. Also, um, you can visit them for all their products and services that they offer there. Or you can make contact with them on telephone number 2683913. Raj Licensed Customs Broker and Shipping Agency, 164 Charlotte and Cumming Street. That is in Georgetown there you can make contact with brother Raj on telephone number 601-6618 or 6210062 Bacchus Drugstore 24 7 and Ho Street in Georgetown contact brother Bobby there on telephone number 227-2604 or 6502255 may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God Almighty Bless these brothers and sisters, bless their earnings, believing brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, increase them in their earnings, uh, in their sustenance, so that they can able to support our program and these educational program. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, bless them. As we usher in the month of Dhul Hijjah, and by extension the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, then let us try our utmost to maximize, let us be keen in observing these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. These are days, these are precious times that is so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so good deeds that are done generally in these first 10 days are deeds that are so beloved and so loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing brothers and sisters. And so let us use these precious times wisely. Let us um, increase in our act of worship, our ibadat, and so we can able to gain the maximum reward out of these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that we are required to do as Muslims, as believers, as we enter these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah? Let us go straight to our reminder of the day for more information on this subject area. Do you know that there are some days that are even more blessed than Friday and in fact even more blessed than Ramadan? Yes indeed, there are days that are more blessed than the days of Ramadan. Do you know what those days are? Those days are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And this is a time period, my dear brothers and sisters, that many people of the Muslim Ummah are unaware of the superiority of these 10 days. Our Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, there are not any days of the year that are holier than these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Therefore, increase in doing good deeds to Allah and increase in saying Allahu Akbar and saying Alhamdulillah and saying La ilaha illallah. So increase in doing your dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are some of the good deeds that we can do in these days? Well, the first good deed that we can do is hajj and umrah. Hajj can only be done during these days, right? This, these are the days of hajj. These are the days of hajj. When the, the hujjaj all congregate on the 7th, 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the Arminah, Muzalifa, Arafat. These are the days of hajj. And before them, people come to do umrah. The second good deed that we can do is to fast in these days. And fasting is a very blessed thing to do in any time of the year, but especially in this time of the year. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, fasting on the day of Arafat 
will be credited with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiving one's sins of the previous year and the following year. Now this is only for the non-hujjaj. If you're doing hajj, you don't fast. If you're not doing hajj, then you fast on the day of Arafat and that is the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. You're supposed to fast on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. It will forgive your sins of the year before and the year after. The third thing that we can do is extra dhikr. Takbir, saying Allahu Akbar and saying La ilaha illallah and saying Alhamdulillah. And in fact, the Sahaba would be so eager to say these things that they would say them out loud even in the marketplaces and especially after the prayers and especially after the prayers uh, for three days after Eid, after every single prayer, we should raise our voice out loud and we should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But many Muslims forget even the 10 days before Eid, where we should praise Allah, the first 10 days of the Hijjah. And this praise is an unconditional praise, meaning that we don't praise uh, at congregated times, we don't praise together, we just praise whenever we want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing that we can do is to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our sins. Again, repentance is something that we should do all the time. But especially in these 10 days, we should repent to Allah. And remember that a true repentance means you feel guilty, you want to give up the sins, you leave the sins that you're doing, you seek Allah's forgiveness, and you turn over a new leaf and you become a better person. Another thing that we can do, the fifth thing that we can do, is to do extra voluntary deeds of prayer and charity, and reading Qur'an. So these are things that we should do again throughout the year. But during this time, even more so, we should do them. Extra prayer, and extra Qur'an, and extra dhikr. And especially the tahajjud prayer would be a very blessed thing to do in these 10 days. And the final thing that you should do is that you should appreciate the blessings of Allah and come close to Him during these 10 days through each and every deed that you can do. Intentions and actions and thoughts and prayer and forgiveness. In other words, appreciate the blessings of Allah upon you and thank Him for what He has given you and seek forgiveness for all that you have fallen short. These are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Take advantage of them and try your best to earn Allah's pleasure through them. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome back to our program. That was our reminder of the day. Uh, indeed, these are very, very important things that you and I can um, inculcate in our lives, especially in these first ten days of the Hijjah. Let us utilize these days, these times wisely. Do not waste them. These are days that are so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah. And so our second portion of our program is coming your way with the kind compliments and the courtesy of 4N Auto Sale. They are located at 27 and 28 La Jalasi, that is on the west coast of Damara. You can contact Brother Farouk on telephone number 6411780 or 6146550. LNS Algos Customs Brokerage Service for fast, reliable, accurate customs brokerage service. Then you can check them out there at 165 Bar Street, that is in Kitty. And also for the customers on the West Coast, then you can visit their branch office at Lot 10A Public Road, Cornelia Ida on the West Coast of the Amara, 225-5495 or 501-0991, the number to call with over 21 years in the customs brokerage business. Dollar Empire Incorporated and Dinar Trading Visit them at Lot 1 Lamaha and Cumming Street. You can contact Brother Iqbal on telephone number 2317293. And the Westside Taxi Service for fast, reliable taxi service. Then check them out. They are located at 38 Lagrange on the uh, West Bank of Dermara. Or you can contact them 504 066 or 500 And lastly, in memory, of my dear and beloved parents, Nazar Muhammad, Bibi Akila Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, bless all of our brothers and sisters who uh, had taken this initiative to make this beautiful investment in this educational program. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, bless their business, bless their earnings. And we humbly ask that you support our brothers and sisters, support their services, their business, their products that they offer so that they can be able to support our programs by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May God Almighty bless each and every one of them. And so the month of Dhul-Hijjah, the month of Hajj and Qurbani, this is the 12th month of the Islamic year. And so believing brothers and sisters, many of our, our, our brothers and sisters would have been invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to undertake this beautiful journey, the Hajj, the pilgrimage, to fulfill this beautiful pillar of Islam, alhamdulillah, and how wonderful it is to be invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to visit his house to fulfill those rituals and to commemorate that legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salat was salam. And so I have prepared a beautiful document, documentary with regards to Hajj and the journey of a lifetime. So I wish to share this with each and every one of you, believing brothers and sisters. I know many a times we would have heard uh, people are, you know, indicating that I'm going to perform the Hajj, I'm going to Mecca, I'm going to, um, you know, to do these rituals and so forth. And sometimes we may not have the understanding with regards to what is it that they're doing, what is it that is taking place uh, at that particular point. And so, inshallah, hopefully that this documentary will be able to bring some insight with regards to this great journey, the journey of a lifetime. So sit back and let us go to our featured presentation. Each year, nearly 3 million pilgrims from around the world travel to the holy city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia for the annual Hajj pilgrimage. Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam, hence it is compulsory for the Muslims who are physically and financially able to must perform Hajj at least once in their lifetime. The Kaaba, meaning the cube, also known as Baytul Haram, meaning the sacred house, is a cuboid shaped building in Mecca. It is the most sacred site in Islam and the focal point during the Hajj pilgrimage. It is also called the Qibla, meaning the direction faced by the Muslims from all around the world while offering their daily prayers and symbolizes unity in worshipping one Almighty God. The history of Kaaba goes back to the Prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him who reconstructed this structure along with his son Ismail peace be upon him. The Holy Quran mentions that this was the first house that was built for humanity to worship one Almighty God. Allah Almighty says in the Quran Indeed, the first house of worship established for mankind was that at Makkah, blessed and a guidance for the worlds. Once the structure of Kaaba was built, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was commanded by Almighty God, Allah, that he should now go and proclaim the pilgrimage to mankind, so that men and women may come from lands far away on camel and on foot. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, and proclaim to mankind the Hajj. They will come to you on foot and on every lean camel. They will come from every deep and distant mountain highway 
to perform Hajj. Since ages, people have been traveling every year to this sacred land of Mecca in order to perform the rituals of Hajj spread over five days of Dhul Hijjah, the twelfth month of the Islamic calendar. The sound of this chant said in Arabic echoes over the land as the pilgrims begin arriving in Mecca by the thousands for the sacred rites. Here I am, O God, at your command. Here I am at your command. You are without associate. Here I am at your command. To you are all praise, grace and dominion. You are without associate. To manage the site of mankind's greatest religious gathering is not an easy task. For the officials, it is an organizational challenge like none other. The Hajj is a test physically for any pilgrim, yet it has not only survived for centuries, it has flourished. The Mecca, once for thousands, today the city caters to millions. During the Hajj, Mecca will become the most crowded place on earth. These numbers present a huge logistical challenge for the organizers. Jeddah Airport, Hajj Terminal is the world's fourth largest air terminal. Its sole purpose is to cater the millions of pilgrims who come from various countries. Mecca lies in the region of Hijaz, Western Saudi Arabia. It's the starting point for every Hajj. Over the next five days, pilgrims will complete a series of prayers and rituals along the Valley of Mina. And then they will gather at the plain of Arafat before a symbolic rejection of devil at Jamarat and circumambulate the holy Kaaba. Ihram is the dress that all the pilgrims wear. They are two white unseen sheets and are universal in appearance. Ihram also contributes to a feeling of unity that pilgrims have when they are in the city of Mecca. They are all brothers and sisters joined to worship one God. Ihram is also a state a pilgrim is in during the Hajj. While they are in the state, pilgrims are not allowed to hunt or kill any living thing participate in sexual intercourse, cut hair or nails, or wear makeup or perfume. Inside the Kaaba, the floor is made of marble and limestone. The interior walls are clad with marble halfway to the roof. The marble is insert with Quranic inscriptions. The top part of the walls are covered with a green cloth embroidered with gold Quranic verses. Caretakers anoint the marble cladding with scented oil. Three pillars stand inside the Kaaba to support the roof. An enclosed staircase leads to the roof. The black cloth that covers the Kaaba outside is called Kiswa. The embroidery contains 15 kg of pure gold threads 
it consists of 47 pieces of cloth and each piece is 14 meter long and 101 centimeter wide. The kiss was wrapped around the Kaaba and fixed to the ground with copper rings. Tawaf. The Hajj begins with a verbal pronunciation of the intention to perform the pilgrimage followed by Tawaf, that is the circumambulation of the Kaaba seven times in counterclockwise direction. This circling is to demonstrate the unity of the believers in the worship of one Almighty God as they move in harmony together around the Kaaba while supplicating to Allah Almighty. Hajj Aswad The circumambulating of Kaaba begins from the Hajj Aswad. Hajj Aswad meaning the black stone is on the eastern cornerstone of the Kaaba. If possible, Muslims are to kiss or touch it, but this is often not possible because of the large crowds. So it is acceptable for them to simply point or hold up their hand to the stone on each circuit. According to a saying of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, the black stone descended from paradise whiter than milk, but the sins of the sons of Adam made it black. Islam strictly prohibits idolatry. Muslims believe that the stone's role in Hajj is simply representative and symbolic in nature not related to belief in the stone itself as having any special power. When the second Caliph Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, came to kiss the stone, he said in front of all assembled, No doubt I know that you are a stone and can neither harm anyone nor benefit anyone. Had I not seen Allah's Messenger Muhammad peace be upon him kissing you, I would never kissed you. Most Muslims follow the example of Caliph Umar. They pay their respect to the stone in a spirit of trust in Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, not with any inherent belief in the stone. Maqam Ibrahim the maqam Ibrahim, meaning Abraham's place of standing, is a rock kept in a crystal dome next to the Kaaba. The footprint in it is believed to have been made by Abraham when he was lifting stone blocks to build the Kaaba. The Zamzam is a well located within Masjid al Haram. 20 meters east of the Kaaba. Islamic history states that the Zamzam well was revealed to Hajra, may Allah be pleased with her, the second wife of Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and the mother of Prophet Ismail. When she was desperately seeking water for her infant son, but she could not find any. As Makkah is located in a hot dry valley with few sources of water, she ran seven times back and forth in the scorching heat between the two hills of Safa and Marwa looking for water. Getting thirstier by the second, Prophet Ismail as an infant scraped the land with his feet where suddenly water sprang out. Sari The ritual walking is the back and forth movement between the hills of Safa and Marwa in Mecca. It is an integral part of the Hajj pilgrimage symbolizing the search of water by 
Hajra, may Allah be pleased with her, in order to give her son Ismail. Allah Almighty mentions in the Quran. فمن حج البيت أو اعتمر فلا جناح عليه أن يطوف بهما ومن تطوع خيرا فإن الله شاكر عليم Indeed, الصفا and المروة are among the symbols of Allah so whoever makes Hajj to the house or performs Umrah, there is no blame upon him for walking between them. And whoever volunteers good, then indeed Allah is appreciative and knowing. Mina On the first official day of the pilgrimage, the millions of pilgrims that have now gathered travel from Mecca to Mina a small village east of the city there they spend the day and night in enormous tent cities praying reading the Quran and resting for the next day Mina also known as the tent city is a neighborhood in Mecca it covers an area of approximately 20 kilometers there are more than 100,000 air-conditioned tents which provide temporary accommodation to visiting pilgrims. The Teflon-coated tents can withstand a temperature of up to 700 degrees Celsius. There, they spend the day and night in enormous tent cities, Arafat. On the second day of the pilgrimage, the pilgrims leave Mina just after the dawn to travel to the plain of Arafat for the culminating experience of the Hajj. Mount Arafat is a 70 meter in height granite hill to east of Mecca. It is also known as the Mount of Mercy. The hill is the place where the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him had delivered the favorable sermon to the Muslims who had accompanied him for the Hajj towards the end of his life. A main reason of this ritual of pilgrimage is the renewal of the prayer of repentance every year standing on the hill of mercy, the climax of Hajj the pilgrims will spend the whole day on Arafat supplicating to Allah to forgive their sins and praying for personal strength in the future. Tears are shed wittily as those who gather make repentance and seek God's mercy, recite words of prayers and remembrance and gather together as equals before their Lord. Muslims around the world who are not at the pilgrimage join them in spirit by fasting for the day of Arafat. Muslim pilgrims visit Muzdalifa in the evening. At Muzdalifa, they collect pebbles which will be thrown in the stone of the devil ritual in Mina during the next four days. Jamarat On the third day, the pilgrims move before sunrise, this time back to Mina. In the valley of Mina is the Jamarat Bridge, the location of the stoning of the devil ritual and performed between sunrise and sunset on the last day of the Hajj. Here they throw the stone pebbles at pillars that represent the temptations of Satan. 
when throwing the stones the pilgrims recall the story of satan's attempt to dissuade prophet abraham peace be upon him from following god's command to sacrifice his own son the stones represent abraham's rejection of satan and the firmness of his faith after casting the pebbles most pilgrims shave their heads and then slaughter an animal often a sheep or a goat and give away the meat to the poor this is a symbolic act that shows their willingness to part with something that is precious to them just as the prophet ibrahim peace be upon him was prepared to sacrifice his son at god's command throughout the world muslims celebrate eid al adha the festival of sacrifice on this day this is the second of the two major festivals in islam each year at the end the pilgrims then return to mecca and perform tawaf e wada that is farewell seven circles turns around the kaaba the renewal of hajj the reward of performing this great journey of hajj was mentioned by prophet muhammad peace be upon him that whoever performs hajj to the house of allah and does not approach his wife for sexual relations nor commits sins while performing hajj he will come out as sinless as a new born child hajj is indeed a powerful means of purification and empowerment in our lives let us make an intention to perform hajj if we are physically and financially able to may you all have a blessed eid welcome back to our program that was our feature presentation that documentary there telling us and giving some giving us some beautiful insight and some beautiful information with regards to that journey of a lifetime the hajj the pilgrimage subhanallah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in the quran when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam wa idhin fil nas bil hajj that call all the people to the pilgrimage that make the call o ibrahim that give them that voice and then we will send the invitation we will invite the people to the house to perform the hajj subhanallah and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and says that when you make the call and when we deliver that invitation then yati yatu karijalan wa alla kulli damir that you will see the people they will coming from all nook and end and corner of the globe you will see them coming by foot by every lean camel and different modes of transportation people will be going towards the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what are some of the benefits and the blessings and the virtue of performing this great act of worship uh, every step that is taken believe in brothers and sisters to go to the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then know well that one bad deed is wiped out and one good deed is added to your account subhanallah and so after the hujjaj they um, they put on the ihram and they perform that two rakat of nafil salah that is as though they have set one arab slave free what is some of the blessings that they will receive on this beautiful journey um, running between the marwa and the safwa every step that they take subhanallah is as though they have freed 70 slaves what are some of the benefits that they will receive subhanallah on this beautiful journey then know well that when they pelt the jamarat that is the shaitan and there's a beautiful um, you know analogy with regards to this jamarat when ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam laid his son down to sacrifice him and the shaitan came to distract him Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam stoned the shaytan three times 
And so those very spot that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam stoned the shaitan, that is where the shaitan came to distract Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And so many pilgrims, they will commemorate that stoning of the shaitan, subhanAllah. And so for every single pebble that they stone the shaitan, then one good deed is added to the book of deeds. And then uh, on the day of Arafah or on the plains of Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sins of all of those hujjaj, subhanAllah, while they're on the plains of Arafah. And lastly, an accepted hajj. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentions this, that an ac accepted hajj is, will put a person in a position as though he will be free from all sin. Um, he will be in a position just as how his mother has given birth to him, subhanAllah. So he'll have a clean slate, he will have a clean page. And so each and every one of us should try our utmost to uh, make that intention to fulfill this pillar of Islam. You know, we have the means to do so, then let us make that effort, let us make that intention, inshallah. And upon, and, and upon all of that, then make sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be selected, inshallah, in the future so we can be able to perform this great journey, the journey of a lifetime, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of our brothers and sisters for joining us this evening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, our sponsors for making this program possible, possible. Alhamdulillah. Join us next week Monday for another segment of Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad right here at channel 69, 8.30. Not to forget our YouTube, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page and stay connected via our WhatsApp group, inshallah. So let us... Um, it is time that we bring the curtains down on our program. I wish to leave you, insha'Allah, with our Islamic greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Electrical contractors, builders, and homeowners. When it comes to electricals, don't take chances. Invest in top quality electrical items from our electrical department at Gafur's. We stock brands from the USA, Canada, and the UK, such as Cooper Allied and Siemens. Get main and distribution circuit panels and breakers in various sizes. Electrical cables in sizes ranging from 1.5 mm to 16 mm in single core, flat and ground flex. Surface and flush switches ranging from 1 gang to 6 gang. Also double pole switches from 20 amps to 45 amps. Outlets 13 amps to 20 amps both surface and flush. Earth rods and clamps 6 inches to 10 inches. Also available are transformers, voltage regulators and more. So for all your home and office and industrial electrical items, visit the Gaffers location nearest you at MacDoom, Parika, Nimes, Land of Canaan, Rose Hall, BV, Kanji and Diamond. <laughs> Now you can really go shopping in Lenora at VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road. Come in and enjoy great prices on the widest range of groceries, beverages, frozen meats and vegetables, and ice cream too, even food for your pets. Get detergents and bathroom soaps and cleaners, the full range and all the brands. Pots and pans for the kitchen, cutlery and crockery for dining. And all the household items you need to make homes so comfortable. The ladies will love our cosmetics collection, perfect for gifts for special occasions and just what you promised yourself. VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road, West Coast, Demerara. Kids 
just need to be healthy and taking care of them can be difficult. That's why at Bacchus Drugstore we stock the widest range in children's vitamins, tonics, formulas for colds, coughs and fevers and other healthcare products at the lowest prices. Remember, your kids are your future. Take care of them. Bacchus Drugstore, where good health counts. I'm 